the decision between single chamber and dual chamber pacemaker though important based on cost device longevity and complication wise is not that easy to make i am trying to summarize based on the 2018 american college of cardiology american heart association heart rhythm society guidelines on this aspect in underprivileged regions given an option there is always a potential bias towards single chamber devices as they are cheaper tend to have more battery life easier to implant and likely to have lesser procedure and lead related issues in symptomatic sinus node dysfunction with correlation between symptoms and bradycardia permanent pacing is a class 1 indication there is no cut off heart rate or length of pause as an indication for pacing in sinus node dysfunction if need for pacing is likely to be very infrequent or the patient has significant comorbidities reducing survival single chamber ventricular pacing has been given a class 2a recommendation in symptomatic sinus node dysfunction in others av conduction has to be assessed and check whether there is a reason to avoid a right ventricular lead as borderline left ventricular function if av conduction is intact and there is reason to avoid an rv lead single chamber atrial pacing has been given a class 1 recommendation atrial based pacing can lower the chance of atrial fibrillation it may be noted that even in those with currently intact av conduction there is a small chance to deterioration later which can be tackled with pacemaker revision if needed right ventricular pacing can potentially lead to worsening of left ventricular function in the long run due to left ventricular dyssynchrony on the other hand if there is no reason to avoid an rv lead and there is chance of deterioration of av conduction dual chamber pacing has been given a class 1 recommendation programming to minimize ventricular pacing has been given a class 2a recommendation in this group it may be also noted that benefit of pacing in sinus node dysfunction is mainly improvement in quality of life Permanent pacing is also recommended when guideline directed medical therapy for other conditions produce symptomatic sinus bradycardia as with beta blockers and calcium channel blockers this is considered when there is no alternative treatment for the other condition is available permanent pacing in that situation permits safe continuation of medications with negative chronotropic effects Symptomatic AV block is another important reason for implantation of pacemaker. In case of infranodal disease, even asymptomatic cases need pacing as there is a risk of sudden onset complete AV block syncope and harm. In patients with acquired second degree morbid type 2 AV block, high grade AV block or complete AV block which are not due to reversible causes permanent pacing has been given a class 1 recommendation in patients with sinus node dysfunction and av block who need permanent pacing dual chamber pacing is recommended over single chamber ventricular pacing as class 1 recommendation in certain patients with av block needing pacing if the frequency of pacing is likely to be low or if there are significant comorbidities single chamber ventricular pacing has a class 1 recommendation patients in sinus rhythm with av block who develop pacemaker syndrome while on single chamber ventricular pacemaker needs revision to a dual chamber pacemaker as a class 1 indication atrial lead should not be implanted in a person with permanent or persistent atrial fibrillation if a rhythm control strategy is not being planned class 3 so that is also an indication for single chamber ventricular pacing advanced pacing options like cardiac resynchronization therapy and his bundle pacing in patients with av block have also been covered in the guidelines they are considered in those with borderline left ventricular function and likely need for pacing more than 40% of the time his bundle pacing can be considered in those with av block in the region of the av node also this is a highly abridged version and those who wish to have more information Please read the full text of the guidelines available as free full text online. 
Here is the journal reference of the 2018 ACCA HRS guidelines. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video. Kindly press the bell icon after that for getting all updates.